powerful king overturned Satan, the rule of Satan. He was more powerful. He defeated Satan and he loosed us from our shackles and our chains. And he does not say, sit over there. I'm going to take the wheel. No, he says, you sit here and I will rule the kingdom through you. Well, good morning once again to everyone in the house of God today. And good morning to our online community. Or should I say hello because you may not be watching in the morning. I don't know. But whenever you're watching or listening and wherever you're doing it, we want you to know that you are welcome in today's service. You are part of this family and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Well, as you know, we've been in a series for the past several weeks, or now I say, I guess for the past month or so, entitled Rediscovering the Kingdom. This is such a very, very, very powerful and um, relevant message, especially in this day and time. So I pray that you are, your ears are open, your heart is receptive and ready to hear what thus saith the Lord. All right. Let's go into it. Let's go back now to the book of Mark. Mark, the first chapter. Mark, first chapter, uh, verse 14 and 15. We're going to read this once again. We're probably going to read it every time. But it goes like this. Mark, the first chapter, verse 14, reads like this. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the what? The gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. This kingdom is at hand. It is here. Today we're going to seek to understand really the kingdom within. The kingdom within. Because the kingdom is here, it is within us, and it is among us. We're going to seek to understand the kingdom within. Let's also go back to the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew 6. Verse 33, Matthew 6, verse 33. And the Bible says here, but seek ye first the what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness must be our top priority. Must be our top priority because from the kingdom of God will flow power, wisdom, revelation, understanding, strength, courage, love, joy, peace. Everything that you have need of, you will find within the kingdom of God. It is that kingdom that the devil fights you so desperately to keep you out of. He keeps you. The enemy wants to continue to put things in your life and things in your mind so that you will not focus on the kingdom that God has given unto you. But today we will discover the power of the kingdom within. God's kingdom is within us and it is among us. And you'll have to know how to access this kingdom in these dangerous times we're living in, these desperate times. So I pray that you're here. Now, on last week, we spoke from the subject of whose side are you on? So make sure that you hear that if you have not heard that. And Jesus says to us that we need to repent. That means that we need to turn away from darkness and turn unto light. Now, let's also go to the book of 1 Peter. 1 Peter, the second chapter, verses 9 and 10. The Lord gives us this understanding of this royal call. And in this verse, you'll understand it seems to be that the very last part of the verse is, is what comes first. But we'll look at this. Uh, verses number uh, 9 and 10, it says this. But ye are a chosen generation. Say, he's talking about me. You are a chosen generation, meaning God chose you. You did not choose God. He chose you. He chose you. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. In other words, you are a nation of kings and priests. Say with me. I am a king and priest. Listen. So he says again, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a an holy nation, a peculiar people. You are God's very own. Why is this? That ye should show forth. The word show forth means to tell forth or to or to proclaim or to publish forth. You're going to publish it or tell it by words and by action, by words and by demonstration. They're going to see it. 
The Lord called you out, and we're going to see this. Let's finish reading. He said that you should show forth the praises of him, uh, of him who have called you uh, out of darkness into his marvelous light. In other words, Jesus summoned you. He saw you in darkness and he called you. The word call there means to sound with a loud voice. He knows his own by name and he called you by name out of darkness. Now look at the, uh, look at the example that he gave us there at the tomb of Lazarus, right? He called Lazarus out by name. Lazarus with a loud voice, right? Lazarus come forth. Lazarus came forth out of darkness, out of death, into life, into his marvelous life, into the marvelous light of God. He called you also by name. Anyone that has named the name of Jesus as Lord and Savior has been called out of darkness. You have been called out by name. You have been summoned by the king to show forth his glory, to show forth his praise. In other words, the Lord Jesus wants to uh, display his goodness throughout your life. He wants to display all that he is, his excellence through you. He called you out of darkness. He summoned you by name and you, uh, ad you adhere to the call. You heard the call and you came forth just like Lazarus did. And you were bound just like Lazarus was bound. And Jesus declared, loose him and let him go. And that is the word of the spirit that God sends out over his people. Loose him and let him go. What was Lazarus bound with? Grave clothes. What were you bound with? Lies and, and the, uh, the control and the influence of Satan. Jesus is still saying that resounding word, loose him, loose her. And and let them go. That's the word that God is saying even now as he's called you out and called you into. He called you out of darkness and called you into the light. And we're forever being summoned closer and closer and closer into his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there's a wise saying and someone has said this. I'm not sure who said it, but it is said, united we stand and one divided we fall. That's actually really, it's really, that's actually a kingdom message right in that. And we'll see this today, as a matter of fact. Let's go back to the book of James, James, the first chapter, James 1. We read this last week as we talked about divided loyalty, divided loyalty. We're going to read this out of the New Living Translation. And this is how it reads, James, the first chapter, verse 6, 7, and 8. And it says, but when you ask him. That is, when you, ask God, when you ask God, be sure that your faith is in God, what? Alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. King James says the person, not, you don't even think about it. Don't even think that you're going to receive anything from the Lord if you have divided loyalty. Remember, Jesus called you out of darkness, out of the rule, the dominion of Satan, into his marvelous light where he is king. Amen. So we have been called out. We need to stay out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So verse 7 says again, such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8, their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Now, we know also that Jesus said, and I'm doing a little bit of recapping here, in Matthew the 6th chapter, verse 24, the Lord says, no man can serve two masters. Again, this is Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be, what? Devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. King James says mammon, and mammon, of course, as we know, is the, the God of this world system, right? The Lord said you cannot straddle the fence. So listen, in order for us to really live an overcoming life, we must understand, again, the operation of the kingdom of God. Rather, we can say, first of all, the kingdom within you and the kingdom that is among you. 
So let's talk very briefly about that kingdom that is within you. So now let's go to Luke, the 17th chapter, Luke 17, Luke 17. Are you ready to go with me today? So the Bible says here in Luke 17, verse 20, 20, it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, what? The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Verse 21, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, let's read this together. Ready? Let's go. The kingdom of God is within you. There is a kingdom that resides in you. The kingdom resides in you. Say with me. The kingdom resides in you. In me. All right. So we're going to we're going to go forth further than that. Then we know also in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse number 10, the Lord tells us to pray in what we call the Lord's prayer or the model prayer. In verse number 10, it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done where in earth as it is in heaven. This earth speaks of us, not just the planet. We must accept the full weight of and reality and the authority of the king of Jesus and his kingdom into our dominion. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that. Your dominion starts within you. Uh, you sit on the throne of your kingdom. You sit on the, on the throne of your dominion. God gave that to man in the very beginning. He gave man the ability to, um, to exercise his authority. He gave man the ability to make decisions, either to accept or reject. And especially, he gave man the ability to demonstrate authority. All right? When man fell, he lost the rule over the earth. Yes, he did. He rejected the influence of the governor. That is the Holy Spirit. He rejected the Holy Spirit's uh, ability to govern him, and he was subjugated. At the same time, he was subjugated by the king of darkness, by, by Satan. Subjugated meaning that he fell under Satan's rule, Satan's control, Satan's dominion. But man retained the kingdom within him. Again, man, when God created man and put man here on the earth, he told man to subdue to control, to rule, to have dominion. Man was meant to rule under the influence of the Holy Spirit, being led by the Spirit, hearing the Father's voice, and carrying out the Father's will upon the planet. God gave man two ways of ruling. One, he would rule himself, the kingdom within, and he would also rule over the kingdom that is without. So when man fell, uh, when man was um, subjugated by Satan, the king of darkness, man lost the earth. Now it's under the control, or should we say the, this world system is under control of Satan, under the kingdom of darkness. This is why God called you out of that darkness through Jesus Christ into the light. Even though we lost control of the world system, man did, we still, every man still maintained the control of the kingdom within. The kingdom within, you sit on your own throne and you decide what goes in and what comes out. You decide what you, what you accept or what you reject. Satan did not take that over. He could not take that over. He could not take man's will. If he could, then none of us could ever be saved. If Satan could control the kingdom within, we would not be able to hear the gospel, nor receive the gospel, nor would we be able to say, Satan, I reject your rule and authority. I now serve under Jesus Christ. So the kingdom within is real. And when the kingdom within lines up with that kingdom, the, the, the heavenly kingdom, the rule and reign of Christ Jesus, when the two become one, we are no longer divided and power is then released. Are you hearing me? Now, furthermore, when you, as the, the ruler of your kingdom, of the inner kingdom, the kingdom within you, when you uh, proclaim allegiance to the high king, to the Lord Jesus, 
You place not only the kingdom within, but everything that is under your rule, you place it under his authority. Think about this. And I saw this very well. Matter of fact, I I saw this on Tuesday as I was working with the people. Uh, The Lord showed me this. It was so wonderful. I saw that I was a king. Now, all of us, all humanity is a king because God made us to rule. We're all kings. Our first dominion is within us. We decide what goes on here, what we hear, what we see, so forth and so on. We can decide who we allow in and out of our lives. The kingdom is within first. And I saw my kingdom as being one that was uh, dilapidated, one that had been dilapidated and broke down. I saw my, my citizens as in poverty. I saw all these things and I saw how Satan had sent his governors or his rulers to influence my thinking and make decisions in my life based on what they were saying. And so my kingdom was broken down. I was under I was under bad shape in disrepair until a more powerful king came in. Boom, boom, boom. And he sent his ambassadors to tell me that there is a more powerful king that is willing to work with you and overthrow the enemy. So I said, yes, I will receive it. And now this was strange to me because this king was willing to give me his entire resources, all of his resources, and send his army to my side and help me and even to help uproot the darkness, the dark powers that were within my kingdom. This kingdom, this king promised me everything. And so I said, yes, I will receive your rule. His name is Jesus. Yes, I will receive your rule. And here's the thing that I saw as well. Jesus didn't tell me, King Jesus didn't tell me, now get down off your throne. I'm going to sit there. He didn't say that. He said, continue to sit on the throne. I will rule through you. I will rule through you. And now I as king, as I submit to his kingdom, as I submit uh, to his authority, as I tell everyone in my dominion, everyone in my influence, everyone under my kingdom, we will now submit to Jesus. I submit to Jesus Christ, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I bow before him. And as I bow before him, everything in my region, everything in my dominion, then bow before him and as I do that all of the authority of his kingdom comes to me all of the wealth comes to me everything that I need comes to me now we've said this before and the Lord brings it brings this back up back up to my remembrance so if someone were to ask you uh, would you rather 10 million dollars I can give you 10 million dollars cash if you had, let's say, if you had a, uh, you had a, a rich relative that was worth trillions of dollars, and they said to you, I'll either give you $10 million cash right here, right now, or I can give you access to everything that I have. One man would say, well, you must be crazy. I would have access. I have access. You don't have access to me. It's not mine, but I have access to it all. I have access to your checkbook. I have access to your credit cards. I have access to your jets, access to your roses, the Rolls Royces. I have access to all of your mansions. I can go anytime I want to. I can stay as long as I want to. I can spend as much as I want to. I have access to everything, but I own none of it. It's a common wealth. In a kingdom, there is a commonwealth. You don't own anything. The king owns everything, but we have access to everything. I'm not seeking to get my own. I'm seeking to get into his, hallelujah, to receive access into all that he has. So this king, this King Jesus, this more powerful king overturns Satan, the rule of Satan. He was more powerful. He defeated Satan and he loosed us from our shackles and our chains. And he does not say, sit over there. I'm going to take the wheel. No, he says, you sit here. And I will rule the kingdom through you. Thus giving us all of his power and authority to rule in his name. We rule now in his name. And this is what we call, this is what the word of God calls the kingdom message. 
That the original intent of God that, that he gave mankind to rule and reign, he didn't, he didn't backpedal on it. That's exactly what he still wants. But now that rule and reign and authority has been given back to man through the king, Jesus Christ. He is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords. So again, the earth was lost, but we retained the kingdom within. It is up to you as a king to submit to the holy king and you have access to all things. Does that make sense? Now, again, we lost control over the earth until Jesus came. And when Jesus came, of course, when King Jesus came, he, he restored all things. He restored all things to us. And when we place our faith and trust and give him our allegiance, swear our allegiance to him, Think about that in the natural world. When a, when a rule, another kingdom or another nation comes over, they put their flag up and they tear the other flag down. And then they tell all the citizens to pledge allegiance to this flag. Pledge allegiance. Promise that you will serve and defend this. You, we take the old flag down and now you pledge allegiance to the flag. Right? Putting your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to my king. I pledge allegiance to my nation. I pledge allegiance. Now, anyone within that kingdom that does not pledge allegiance, they're known as a traitor. They're known as a rebellious group. Something that must be uprooted and torn out so that the kingdom may dwell in peace and in oneness. United we stand, divided we fall. And so when a man is born of God, born again, he receives the kingship once again. But not just over himself because he, he retained the kingship. Man retained the kingship over his heart. The Lord gives him uh, authority to reign in his kingdom. Let's look at Matthew. Let's look at Matthew 16. Matthew 16 the Lord says this to Peter. He says, verse 18, Matthew 16, verse 18. The Lord says, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Look at verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That's, I give you rule, the ability to rule, to reign in heavenly things in the kingdom of God. So this is part of what we would say a coronation. If you think about it, when the king had his sword and he would knight, he would knight different ones or, or a king would come and he would put a, a high king would, would crown you ruler over, over a dominion or a territory. He would put a crown on you. That crown is your keys or your keys. That crown that is placed upon your head gives you the authority to move in and out of supernatural things, of heavenly things. Before you were ruler only over the kingdom within and we were bound by the kingdom of darkness. Now Jesus called us out and says, come. Come, you will, you will display my goodness. You will display my greatness throughout all the earth. I have called you out of darkness into my marvelous light so that you can show forth my praise. You will show them how good I am through your words and, and through your actions, through your life. My glory will be seen through you. Hallelujah. When you walk into the room, they'll feel my presence. When you touch them, it won't be you but touching them, but it'd be me touching you, touching them through you hallelujah they'll see my influence in and through you it's the kingdom of God reverberating out of your life like shock waves all around you Amen. he said I give you before you had the keys of the kingdom within but now I give you the keys of the kingdom without but not just an earthly kingdom I exalt you higher he says I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven which far surpasses anything that we had previously, far surpasses anything over the kingdom of the devil. Jesus said, 
as you make me king, I give you authority as a king. When your life lines up with him, he says in verse 19, and I will give unto, unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He's giving you the ability to bind and to loose. Now the incorrect, we, we would say the, the, the more correct interpretation of this verse is that the Lord gives you the ability to bind what has already been bound in heaven. He gives you the ability to loose what has already been loosed in heaven. You will speak in agreement with the Father's will. That's why Jesus told us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as is in heaven. His, his kingdom come, his will be done. We are promoting his kingdom, his will. So what God says, I bound it in heaven. Then we say on earth, I bound it on earth. When God said, I've loosed it in heaven, then we say, I loose you in earth. God said, I bound sickness in heaven. I bind it in the earth. I've loosed prosperity in heaven. I loose it in the earth. We are meant to echo the words of our king throughout this realm. Walking in his power and walking in his authority. This is kingdom. There's a difference between being a church goer and being a kingdom citizen. There's a difference between someone being religious and being a kingdom citizen and walking in power and walking in authority. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He said, I give you keys. I'm giving you authority. Work along with me. Remember, the Lord is not asking you to vacate your throne. He's asking you to sit on your throne. Remain on the throne and let him rule through you. We've often prayed, and I prayed this prayer for many years, until the Lord snapped me out of it. I would pray, Lord, let there be none of me and all of you, none of me and all of you. Well, the Lord revealed to me he had none of me, and he didn't like that. That's why he sent his son to die for me upon the cross. Hallelujah. He wants all of me. Hallelujah. He doesn't want me to sit aside. He says, come, let's rule together. Hallelujah. Father and son, father in creation, let's rule together. Hallelujah. It's the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Kingdom, glory to the Lamb of God. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, um, this is Jesus here giving us the right and the privilege again to work alongside with Father that his will be done in the earth. We're not trying to promote our will. We're promoting the Father's will. We're working alongside with him under the influence and the direction of the Holy Spirit. However, we become powerless. We become impotent when we neglect this relationship. Let me show you some things, and we've said this. Let's go to Matthew, the Matthew 12 chapter, Matthew 12. And this is where this verse comes from. As we said before, united we stand, divided we fall. Look how the Lord says it here. He says this. He says, Matthew, Matthew 12, verse 25 and 26. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, is brought to ruin. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then, rather, uh, how shall then his kingdom stand again satan has a kingdom and we were very familiar with that because we were under it until jesus the mighty conqueror and ruler came and overthrew the powers of darkness hallelujah Amen. now satan has no more rule no more access to you Glory to God. No more legal access to you. That's why even when, when Caleb and Belinda testified how they broke the power of the enemy, how they spoke things and it came to pass in their lives, they were operating in the kingdom of God. The natural man cannot do that. The natural man does not have the power to overthrow Satan because he's still under his control. But when you say, Lord, I am king over this dominion and I submit my dominion under your control. Lord, you rule through me. You reign through me and then the power and presence of God begins to overshadow your life 
and the spirit of God begins to hover over your entire kingdom, bringing to pass God's will in everything that you do. We must acknowledge that kingdom that is within and acknowledge that kingdom that is without because he is not only around you, he is also in you. And when we bow and submit to him, he changes things throughout your entire kingdom. Throughout your entire kingdom. Listen to Proverbs uh, 25, verse number 28. Proverbs 25, verse 28. Listen to this. It says, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. If you don't allow him to help you influence the kingdom within, your city is defenseless. And a walled city, rather a city, especially back in Bible times, without walls was known as a city that was dishonorable, that was without honor and vulnerable to all kinds of attack. We must agree with his rule. We must agree with his reign. We must bow down and pledge allegiance to Christ. Hallelujah. Listen to this same verse out of the Message Bible. Proverbs 25, 28 says, A person without self-control that is not ruling well the kingdom within, a person without self-control is like a house with its doors and windows knocked out. Who would want to live in a house like that? In the, winter, in the winter time, you surely cannot get warm. And you better not hang up your favorite TV on that wall. Because somebody may come in there and get it. Are you hearing me? So for us to have maximum impact, we must fully receive the king through the leading and the influence of his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must become, once again, governor over our lives. We must submit to his governorship, to his leading. We must submit to, his, to our king, the Lord Jesus, his, to his kingdom, and we must slay the rebels that are, uh, that are continually popping up around our kingdom. Slay the rebels. Because as we said before, when you hear statements like, God said, no, you can't do this, or don't do this, or don't go that, don't do that, or when the Lord says something that is that rubs you the wrong way, the rebels on the inside of you want to stand up and say, I don't have to do that. I can do what I want to do. But the king's judgment is perfection. The king's judgment is without flaw, without error. The king's way is actually the right way in every situation. His plan is perfection and grace. But we still have those rebellious tendencies on the inside of us that must be crucified. The Lord talked about this. Let's look at this one more time. Let's look at this in Luke, Luke 19. Luke 19. As we're beginning to close, Luke 19, verse 12 through 14. And it says this. And he said, therefore, uh, remember, this is the parable of the nobleman who's going to receive his kingdom. And he said, therefore, a nobleman um, went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. That is to be he was going away to be crowned king and then to return. Verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens, those, those were some people, maybe he's going to be crowned king over that territory, but there were some people in that territory that did not want him to reign over them. They said this, but, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. There were people in this territory, in this region that did not want the king's authority. Didn't want it. And there are some within us, within our kingdom, within some parts of us that don't want Christ to reign and to rule. 
Well, after this king gets back, he, he gives um, the servants, he, uh, he talks about them, and they tell the servants tell what they've done with his resources, and he tells them, well, have, you, have rule over ten cities. Have rule over five cities. He begins to, he begins to, uh, he begins to tell them or, or give them official rule that they can go out and do his will. Let's look at verse number 27, verse, uh, Luke 19, verse 27, and it says, But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. In other words, execute them right here. The rebels must be executed. The rebels must be executed. Now, the Lord continues in this same thought. Let's look at this in Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Are y'all get, getting anything out of this? Matthew 13, as the Lord continues, uh, he's talking about the parable of the wheat and the tares. And at the very end of this, as he begins to explain what the wheat and the tares mean and, and what's about the parable, he begins to give them this same thought that the rebels must be rooted out. Why? So that the kingdom can no longer be divided, so that the kingdom can be won. Because remember, when the kingdom is divided, when there is divided loyalty, God's not going to hear your prayers. You're not going to receive the influence. You're not going to receive the power. You're not going to receive the full resources from the kingdom of God that's around you and within you. You're not going to receive it. The Lord says, let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. Someone with divided loyalties Divided loyalty between the king of kings and, and the enemy, Satan, is not going to get anything from the Lord. So when we are in communion with him, in oneness with him, then the power of God is going to flow throughout your life. Listen, we've got to uproot the rebels. Say with me, uproot the rebels. Listen, look at uh, Matthew uh, 13 again, verse 39 says, uh, The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the, the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Look at verse 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they, say they, they, say they, they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. And verse 42, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I want you to notice something here. Uh, in this same parable, those uh, in the parable, when they got up the next morning and the, the Bible says the servants went out and they saw, hey, there's wheat sown with the tear. I mean, there, there's tear sown among the wheat. And they asked the master, do you want us to go and, and pull them all up? He said, no, 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 because you don't know what you're doing. You may uproot the wheat while you're trying to get to the tear. So you and I don't have the ability to uproot evil within us. The only thing that we can do is bring the rebels to the Lord. That is, we're going to confess our sins before him. We're going to renounce those things. Lord, I, I, I renounce drunkenness. I, I renounce uh, smoking or whatever. Lord, I, I, I renounce it. I, I renounce cussing and, and gambling. I renounce it. Whatever the rebels are in your life, whatever wants to stand, I, I renounce lust and, and pornography. I, I renounce witchcraft. Lord, I, whatever rises up within you that does not want to submit to Jesus, we declare, Lord, I bring it before your throne that you may execute it there. I renounce it. It's up to you and I to renounce it, to confess it, to repent of it. And then the spirit of God goes through the kingdom. <laughs> the spirit of God goes throughout the kingdom and he uproots and he brings those things to death. Now, here's a warning I will leave you with today. As the Lord also dealt with me about this. There's a thing called targeted goals and also byproducts, targeted goals and byproducts. So you're going to uproot these, these enemies within you by confession and by repentance, and the Spirit of God is going to move throughout your life uprooting all of these enemies that's within you because you don't know what to uproot or how to uproot it. It's a work of the Spirit. So you're going to, number one, uh, confess, 
confess these things before the Lord. We're going to repent of them. We're going to renounce it. I don't want you. No, I don't want this thing in my life. Lord, I bring it before you. And then you're also going to declare who you are in him. Declare who you are in him and who he is in you. Declare that you are the righteousness of God. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. I am the redeemed. I am a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Declare who you are in him and who he is in you. And be built up, built up, built up in the knowledge of who you are and who he is. Be built up in that. Hallelujah. We're going to confess, renounce. Let this thing go. Let it be burned up by the Spirit of God. Let the Holy Spirit mortify it, put it to death. And we're going to call those things, uh, be not as though they are. We're going to declare that we are the righteous. We are the redeemed. We are justified. And when you do that, you're aligning yourself. You're aligning your kingdom up with his will. And the more oneness you're in, the more oneness you are, the more power you will flow, the more power you will see brought out throughout your life. But again, let me give you this, this last word here. There's a thing called targeted goals and byproducts. Targeted goals and byproducts. Please listen to this. A sinless and holy life is the byproduct of fellowship with God. They are not the intended goal. A sinless and holy life is not your intended goal. It is the byproduct. Let me give you an example. If the Lord said to you, I want you to go and jump in that pool of water. Jumping the pool of water is the, is the, is the goal. The byproduct is getting wet. The Lord tells you, I want you to go and sit in front of the fireplace. Sitting in front of the fireplace is the goal. Getting warm is the byproduct. The Lord is not saying to you and I, I'm commanding you to live a sinless life. I'm commanding you to have a life without sin. No, he's telling you, I want you to have an intimate relationship with me. Walk with me. And because you have an intimate relationship with me and you walk with me, you'll find yourself having a sinless life, living a life of holiness. If we were to focus solely on getting sin out of our lives, I'm going to do this. And, and listen, all of us have an internal list. And the devil makes sure that you have yours. You have an internal list of things that you know that you need to stop doing. Internal list of sin. I need to stop doing this. I need to stop doing that. I need to stop. I need to stop. I need to stop. Stop. And we think as soon as I stop doing all these things, then I am holy. Then I am righteous. Then God will hear my prayers. Then I am. I am there. Then. Then I am there. That's the byproduct. All those things will fall away as you submit yourself to the King. All those things will fall away as you walk in the light, as he is in the light, and you have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from all sin and unrighteousness. God bless you. Are you hearing? It is the fellowship. It is walking with him in love and in unity. It is the goal. Living the sinless life, stopping this and stopping that and stopping this, stopping that, that's the byproduct. If you go after that, trying to stop this and that, you will push God aside. Hold a minute. Hold on a minute, God. Yeah, I, I know you want to love me. I know you want to love on me. Yes, but I got to stop doing this first. So hold on. You hold your spot right there, God. I'll be right back. I got to work over here and stop. I got to get myself holy. I got to make, make sure that I am right. And so then when I'm right, then I can come back over here with you. But you understand, I can't really fellowship with you yet until I get myself together. So I'm going to go over here and get myself together first. Which is the same thought of Pharisees and the, and the scribes and all them. They thought, hey, I can get myself together. Which, which promotes pride and arrogance. Which really promotes as well, we can say that it, it promotes a, which promotes deism instead of theism. Deism is the concept of believing that there's a God, that there's a creator of all things. And he's the one who set the laws and set things in motion. But deism says, but he's gone now and he no longer 
he no longer influences mankind, but, but he's going, he's doing his thing, and it's up to us now to get it done because he gave it all to us. That's deism. God's no longer, he's no longer available. It's up to us to get it done now. But theism says, yes, God created everything, and he set laws and, and things in order, and he is still here present with us, guiding us and helping us, and he is still influential in the lives of man. That's theism. So when you go try to work it out yourself, that's deism. You're saying God's left and it's all up to you. But when you work with God, that's theism. God is here with me and he helps me uproot the rebels. He helps me be at oneness with him. Because he knows that a kingdom divided against itself will fall. But if my kingdom is submitted to him, we will stand and stand strong. But I realize, as you must realize, that you are not strong enough nor wise enough to go throughout your entire kingdom and find everything that is wrong. That was never the Father's intent for you. It was your intent for you to stay in the throne room and worship him and love him and continue to confess who you are in him and who he is in you. When things pop up, you bring that before the king and say, Lord, you need to slay this too. Slay this. I just did this, Lord. Slay it. I give it to you. I renounce that thing. I confess that before you. I cuss them out again. Lord, please get this out of me. And then the Holy Spirit goes throughout your kingdom. And he uproots all the evil that's there. He uproots it all. He sends forth his angels to uproot and take out all, everything that offends within his kingdom. So that that kingdom is at a oneness and the power of God will flow. United we stand, divided we fall. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you continue to deal with your people about the kingdom within and about the kingdom without and the kingdom that is among us. Father, I pray that you would show them, continue to show them the demonstration of this kingdom. And Holy Spirit, we know that you are the teacher. We proclaim that. And Lord, I pray that you continue to deal with your people, continue to lead them into all truth and show them things to come. Continue to show them who they are in you and who you are in them, that they may rule well that they may rule well and that you may show forth your praises throughout their lives and that men, women, boys, and girls throughout this globe will know that Jesus truly is the great King. Bless your people, Father. I thank you for entrusting your kingdom into them. We love you today and I speak your blessings upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.